Do you ever find yourself stuck in your thoughts, going over and over the same worries without finding an answer? Do you feel like the question, what if, gets louder and louder, making it hard to enjoy now? If this sounds like you, you're not by yourself. But what if there was a way to quiet those thoughts and see things more clearly? In our fast-moving world, thinking too much about everything can feel like a shadow that's always behind us. It turns our minds into places full of maybes and fears that stop us from moving. But imagine living where your thoughts don't boss you around. Imagine having a calm mind more often than not. This dream can be real. We're going to explore 10 simple but powerful steps from Stoicism to help you stop thinking too much. These old but gold ideas will free you from the tangle of your thoughts and show you how to live with peace and purpose. If you're ready to get back your peace of mind and face life's ups and downs easily, make sure to follow along. Join us as we learn how to make things simpler and find strength breaking free from overthinking for good. 1. Imagine overthinking as an outside noise. Do you know how it feels when you're trying to focus, but there's a loud noise outside that just keeps distracting you? Overthinking is a lot like that noise, but it happens inside your head. It starts with just one worry or thought and quickly grows until it feels like it's taking over. It's something many of us face in our busy lives with so many things happening all at once. A wise person from the past, Marcus Aurelius, once said that our happiness depends a lot on the kind of thoughts we have. So our first step to beating overthinking is to see these thoughts as if they're just noise coming from outside, not the real you. Imagine your mind is like a sky. And these thoughts are just clouds passing by. You're the sky, clear, wide, and peaceful. How do we do this? Whenever you notice you're starting to overthink, picture those thoughts as if they're just noise. They're not helpful, and they're not part of who you really are. By doing this, you're not fighting with your thoughts. You're just letting them go by like clouds in the sky. This can make them feel less heavy and easier to deal with. Practice seeing your thoughts this way, and with time you'll find it easier to not get caught up in them. You'll start to feel more peaceful, like you've found a quiet spot away from all the noise. This is our first step. Learning to see overthinking as just noise and remembering that you are much more than your thoughts. 2. Change your focus to calm the noise. Have you ever caught yourself lost in thought, worrying about a bunch of what-ifs and feeling totally drained afterward? It's like having too many apps open on your phone all at once and it just slows everything down. We all go through this, especially when we're trying to keep up with everything life throws our way. The secret to dealing with this is to change where you're putting your energy. Instead of letting your thoughts run wild, find something real right now to focus on. It could be anything that takes your full attention. Think of it like cleaning up a messy room. When you focus on putting things in their place, there's less clutter and more space to enjoy. Seneca, a smart guy from long ago, said that being happy means enjoying what we have right now without worrying too much about what's coming up. That's our second step. Whenever you find yourself overthinking, pause and ask, what's something I can do right now? Then do it whether it's a small task or just taking a deep breath. By focusing on something in the present, you pull yourself out of the whirlpool of future worries. It's a simple but powerful way to bring your mind back to what's important. 
This doesn't mean ignoring your thoughts or feelings. It's about choosing to not let them control you. Every time you shift your focus from overthinking to doing something productive, you're taking back control of your mind. And the more you do this, the easier it becomes. You'll start to notice that the noise in your head gets quieter and you feel more at peace. This is how we start to turn down the volume on overthinking and tune into the moment. Three, learn to let go, like dropping a heavy bag. Imagine you're carrying a heavy bag all day. It's so full that it's starting to hurt your shoulder, but here's the thing. At any moment, you can choose to put it down. Overthinking is a lot like carrying that heavy bag. It's filled with all our worries about the past and the future, and it weighs us down. But we can learn to put it down. A smart man from history, Epictetus, once said that worrying about things out of our control is like trying to catch the wind. It's impossible and exhausting. So our third step is learning to let go. But how do we do that? First, recognize that not all thoughts deserve your time. Some are like uninvited guests who just won't leave. Imagine your mind as a house and you're the one who decides who gets to stay and who has to leave. Start by noticing when you're caught up in overthinking. Then gently remind yourself that these thoughts are not helping you. It's okay to let them go. Letting go can be as simple as taking a deep breath and imagining those heavy thoughts leaving your mind like leaves floating down a river. They come and then they drift away. This doesn't mean you don't care. It means you're choosing not to hold on to things that only make you feel heavy. The more you practice this, the lighter you'll feel. It's like learning to put down that heavy bag. You'll start to notice more moments of peace and less strain from all that mental carrying. Letting go isn't giving up. It's giving yourself permission to move forward without unnecessary weight. This step is all about finding the strength to open your hands and let those worries fly away, making room for more joy and peace in your life. 4. Set aside time for worries. Do you ever notice how worries seem to pop up at the worst times? Like when you're trying to enjoy a moment with friends or right before you go to sleep. It's as if your mind has a mind of its own bringing up all sorts of concerns and what-ifs. But what if you could tell your worries to wait their turn? Here's a handy tip from the world of ancient wisdom. Create a worry time. It might sound a bit strange, but it works. Pick a time each day. That's your official time to worry. It could be 20 minutes in the afternoon or evening whenever it suits you best. During this time, you're allowed to think about all your worries, write them down, and even talk about them if you want. But here's the catch. Once worry time is over, you try to put those worries aside until the next scheduled time. This technique does two things. First, it helps you realize that you do have control over your thoughts. You start to see that worries can actually wait and they don't need to take over your entire day. Second, by giving yourself permission to worry only at a specific time, you'll often find that the things you were so concerned about don't seem as big or as scary when their time comes. Think of it like keeping your worries in a box. You can open it, look inside, and deal with what's there, but only at the right time. For the rest of the day, you keep the box closed. This approach doesn't make your worries disappear, but it can make them feel more manageable. 
It's a way of organizing your thoughts so they don't clutter up your whole day. By setting aside a specific time to deal with worries, you're taking back control. You're saying, I decide when and how I'm going to worry about something, not the other way around. And the funny thing is, the more you practice this, the less you might find yourself needing that worry time at all. It's a step towards a calmer mind and a more enjoyable life. 5. Break big worries into small steps. Have you ever faced a problem so big that you didn't even know where to start? It's like standing at the bottom of a mountain and looking up, wondering how you'll ever reach the top. Overthinking can make any challenge seem bigger than it really is, turning molehills into mountains in our minds. But there's a way to make these mountains manageable again. Marcus Aurelius, a wise emperor from long ago, once said that what stands in the way becomes the way. This means that the very obstacles we face can show us the path forward. So, our fifth step is to take those big, overwhelming worries and break them down into smaller, more manageable steps. Start by asking yourself, What's one small thing I can do right now to make this situation better? It doesn't have to be a big action. Even something small can start to move you in the right direction. It's like climbing a mountain by focusing on one step at a time rather than staring up at the peak. For example, if you're worried about a big project, your first small step could be just to make a to-do list. If you're anxious about a difficult conversation, maybe your first step is simply to write down what you want to say. These small actions can help to quiet the noise in your head because you're no longer stuck. You're moving forward. This approach does two things. First, it helps to make your worries feel more manageable. When you break them down into steps, you can see a clear path forward. Second, it shifts your focus from overthinking to action. Instead of getting lost in your thoughts, you're taking charge and making progress. Each small step you take builds your confidence and shows you that you can handle the challenge. Before you know it, you'll look back and realize how far you've come. Not because the worry was any less significant, but because you approached it one step at a time. This is how we turn mountains back into molehills and find our way through the challenges we face. 6. Find the good in today. Ever find yourself so caught up in what you don't have or what went wrong that you forget to see what's actually good around you? It's like looking through a lens that only shows you the bad stuff, making it hard to appreciate the good. Overthinking often comes from focusing too much on what's missing or what could be better, which can make us feel pretty down. But there's a way to clean that lens and start seeing the brighter side of life. Seneca, a wise thinker from the past, had a great piece of advice. True happiness comes from enjoying what we have right now without always worrying about what's next. So our sixth step is all about shifting our focus from what's going wrong to what's going right. It's about finding the good in today. Start by thinking of three things you're grateful for every day. They don't have to be big things. Maybe it's a tasty cup of coffee, a message from a friend, or just the fact that the sun came up. This simple act of recognizing the good can make a huge difference in how you feel. It's like turning on a light in a room that's been dark for too long. Suddenly, you see all the wonderful things that were there all along, but were just hidden in the shadows of your worries. Practicing gratitude helps to quiet the noise of overthinking because it brings your focus back to the present. 
instead of wandering off into the land of what ifs and if onlys, you're right here, noticing and appreciating the life you have now. And the more you do this, the more you'll find that happiness isn't about getting everything you want. It's about loving what you have. By choosing to see the good in your life, you're not only making yourself feel better, but you're also building a habit of positive thinking. This doesn't mean ignoring the problems or pretending everything's perfect. It's about balancing your view so you can face challenges with a stronger, happier mindset. So let's start cleaning that lens and focusing on the good in today. It might just change how you see everything. 7. Focus on what you can do, not what you can't. Have you ever found yourself stuck because you're so worried about what might go wrong? It's like standing at the edge of a pool, wanting to jump in, but instead you're just focusing on the cold shock you'll feel. This kind of overthinking about outcomes we can't control can really hold us back. But there's a way to shift this mindset and get moving. Epictetus, a thinker who practiced Stoicism, taught us that we should concentrate on our efforts and what we can control rather than the outcome, which is frequently out of our control. This means changing our focus from worrying about the results to concentrating on what we're doing right now. So, our seventh step is about asking ourselves What's one thing I can do right now that's within my control? Maybe it's preparing for a meeting as best as you can, starting a project you've been putting off, or just choosing to smile even when you're not feeling great. It's about doing the best you can with what you have. When we focus on our actions instead of the possible outcomes, something amazing happens we start to feel more in control and less worried about what might happen. It's like when you finally jump into the pool and realize the water's fine and you can handle the chill. You're too busy swimming and having fun to worry about how cold it felt at first. This approach doesn't mean we ignore our goals or stop caring about results. It just means we understand that our power lies in our actions and choices, not in trying to predict or control the future. By concentrating on what we can do right now, we reduce overthinking and start to make real progress. Focusing on your efforts also helps you to see the value in the work you're doing, regardless of the outcome. It teaches you to appreciate your own hard work and dedication, and it reminds you that success is more about the journey than the destination. This way, you can enjoy each step you take, knowing you're doing your best and let the future unfold as it will. Let's focus on what we can control and take that leap into the pool. 8. Embrace challenges as opportunities. Have you ever noticed how avoiding problems or discomfort can actually make you worry more? It's like when you keep dodging a difficult task. The thought of it grows bigger and scarier in your mind. But what if I told you that facing these challenges head on could be the key to worrying less? It's about turning what we usually try to avoid into opportunities to grow stronger. Marcus Aurelius, a wise leader from ancient times, once said, Life is more like wrestling than dancing. This means that life is full of challenges, and instead of trying to avoid them, we should learn to engage with them and wrestle with them. So, our eighth step is about practicing what's called voluntary discomfort. It's about choosing to face challenges on purpose, to prepare ourselves for the unexpected, and to learn that we can handle more than we think. Start with something small. 
Take a cold shower, try sleeping on the floor, or give up something you enjoy for a day. These actions aren't meant to make you suffer, but to show you that discomfort isn't as bad as your mind makes it out to be. It's like training for life's bigger challenges by starting with the smaller ones. By stepping out of your comfort zone on purpose, you begin to break down the walls of fear that overthinking builds around you. You learn that you're capable of facing discomfort and this realization can make you stronger and more confident. It's about understanding that growth often comes from discomfort, and by embracing it, you can reduce the power that worries and what-ifs have over you. Each time you choose voluntary discomfort, you're telling yourself that you can handle the challenges life throws your way. This doesn't just lower your tendency to overthink. It also builds a foundation of resilience and courage. You start to see challenges not as threats, but as opportunities to become a stronger version of yourself. So, let's embrace voluntary discomfort and turn our challenges into stepping stones for growth. It's a powerful way to quiet the noise of overthinking and live a life filled with more confidence and less worry. Nine. Remember life's bigger picture. Ever get so caught up in the small stuff that you forget to look at the big picture? It's easy to do. We overthink a detail or a moment until it feels like the biggest thing in the world. But when we step back, we realize it's just a small part of a much larger story. This is what the ninth step is all about remembering the bigger picture of life. Seneca, a wise philosopher, once said that we're not given a short life, but we make it short by wasting it on worries and unnecessary things. What he's telling us is to focus on what truly matters. When you find yourself overthinking, ask, will this matter in a year, five years, 10? More often than not, you'll find that many of your worries are temporary and not worth the mental energy you're giving them. To put this into practice, whenever you're stressed or worried about something, try to zoom out. Imagine your life as a movie, and this worry is just one scene. It's not the whole movie, just a part of it. This helps you see that life is filled with ups and downs, but no single moment defines the entire story. Remembering the bigger picture also means appreciating the time we have. Instead of worrying about the future or regretting the past, focus on making the most of now. This doesn't mean ignoring your responsibilities or not planning for the future. It means balancing those plans with being present and not letting overthinking steal your joy. By keeping the bigger picture in mind, you'll find it easier to let go of minor worries and focus on what truly matters. This perspective helps reduce overthinking by giving you a clearer sense of what's worth your attention and what's not. It's a reminder to cherish the moments that matter and to live more fully in the present. So let's step back. Look at the big picture and focus on making our lives meaningful and full of moments worth remembering. It's a powerful way to quiet the noise of overthinking and to live a life that's true to what really matters. 10. Seek perspectives outside your own. Sometimes, no matter how much we try to untangle our thoughts by ourselves, we end up going in circles. It's like being lost in a forest where every path looks the same. This is when it can be incredibly helpful to ask for directions, to seek perspectives outside our own. Our final step to stopping overthinking is to open up to the wisdom and viewpoints of others. Seneca, a philosopher known for his practical advice, encouraged us to consult our friends. 
especially on matters concerning ourselves. He was aware that bias or emotions can occasionally cloud our own judgments. Talking to someone else can give us a fresh perspective, shine a light on our blind spots, and offer solutions we might not have considered. So how do we put this into action? Start by identifying someone you trust, a friend, family member, or mentor. Share your thoughts and concerns with them. Just the act of explaining your situation to someone else can help you see it more clearly. And their feedback can provide new insights and approaches you hadn't thought of. It's also beneficial to look beyond personal acquaintances. Reading books, listening to podcasts, or even exploring new hobbies can introduce you to ideas and worldviews that challenge your own. This exposure can shift your thinking, open your mind to new possibilities, and reduce the cycle of overthinking by broadening your understanding of the world. Remember, seeking outside perspectives is not about finding someone to solve your problems for you. It's about enriching your own thinking with the diversity of life's experiences and wisdom. This doesn't mean you'll always agree with what you hear or read, but even understanding a different viewpoint can be a valuable tool in breaking the cycle of overthinking. By opening ourselves up to the perspectives of others, we take a step back from the maze of our own thoughts. We learn that there are many ways to navigate life's challenges, and sometimes the best path forward is the one we discover with the help of those around us. Let's embrace the vast world of ideas and experiences out there. It's a treasure trove of insights waiting to help us quiet the noise of overthinking and lead us towards a more balanced and open-minded approach to life. Conclusion. In conclusion, we've explored 10 stoic ways to stop overthinking, each offering practical strategies to reclaim your mental peace. From visualizing overthinking as an external force to seeking perspectives outside your own, these techniques can empower you to break free from the cycle of rumination. Remember that overthinking is a common challenge, and it's okay to seek help and apply these strategies gradually. The Stoic philosophers remind us that the key to a fulfilled life lies in mastering our thoughts and actions, and these methods align with that timeless wisdom. If you found these Stoic ways to stop overthinking valuable, we invite you to take action today. Join our community of seekers of wisdom by hitting the subscribe button. Don't miss out on more insights and strategies for a balanced and mindful life. If you resonated with any part of this video, show your appreciation by giving it a thumbs up. Your feedback encourages us to create more content that benefits you. If you believe these stoic strategies can help others, share this video with friends and family. Together we can spread wisdom and make a positive impact on more lives. Remember, the journey to conquer overthinking and lead a more peaceful life begins with small steps. Your support fuels our mission to provide you with valuable insights and practical guidance on your path to personal growth. Thank you for being part of our community, and let's continue this journey of wisdom together.